All right, today we'll be comparing Spotify versus Tidal Hi-Fi song quality. Now, you might have heard that Tidal Hi-Fi delivers higher song quality over Spotify. You might have noticed also that Tidal Hi-Fi costs something like two times the price of a Spotify. Abo. Roughly, it's 20 bucks versus 10 bucks per month comparison. So why is that and what is this all about? Let's start with technicals. The reference for both Tidal Hi-Fi and Spotify is 44.1 kHz 16-bit stereo files, the quality of a CD laser disc like the one I have here. Reference bitrate is the 41411 or 1400 kilobit per second, which is the number of bits which are you needed to store one second of sound. That said, Spotify uses MP3 like compression, which gives smaller and lower quality sounds, and Tidal uses FLAC like compression, which gives larger and higher quality sounds. Okay, you might have heard of MP3, but what is FLAC and how does it work? Well, the size of a FLAC or free lossless audio coder from our reference is around 1000 kilobit per second. So the reference is 1400 and our flag is 1000 kilobit per second. And it has some competing standards like ALAC. And the question is, how do you achieve this compression ratio, roughly 1.5 to two times, uh, while going from laser disc quality down to flag? Well, that's done by means of lossless compression just like a very regular, normal zip file. You zip a file, you unzip it, and it's the same. That's what lossless compression is about. So, there is actually no difference between flag and laser disc. That 1.5 to 2 is actually the maximum ratio which can be reached by means of today's compression tools. More than this, you won't be able to retrieve the original file anymore. That said, MP3 or MPEG layer 3 must pull out quite some techniques to achieve such a high compression ratio. The bitrate of a good MP3 is around 320 kilobit per second, and the bitrate of a bad MP3 or old school MP3 is around 128 kilobit per second. It has competing standards like OTG and AAC, which however work in a very similar manner. Well, how does it work? Well, in general, the idea is that a recording contains more sounds that what our ear is able to receive. So the idea is that by removing those sounds which cannot be heard, the perceived quality of the sound is preserved. Now this boils down to sub bands calling. Uh, now let's take the spectrum of uh, sound, right? Uh, you typically have low pitch sound, mid pitch sound, and high pitch sound, right? Low pitch sounds like the contrabass and the electric bass, mid-pitch sound like the human voice, a high-pitch sound like the cellistone or the snare, for example. Clearly, you can decompose even further if needed. Now, intuitively, if you have a band playing and one of those pitch sounds is louder than the other, you will focus on that sound and pay less attention to the other sounds. Like, let's say that the singer is very loud, then you will focus on the singer and not pay so much attention to the rest of the band. If in a certain part of the sound the bass is playing very loud, you will concentrate on the bass and lose your attention on the other sounds. And this works quite well. So the idea is that in an MP3 we spend all the bits which are available to encode very well the loud part of the sound and fewer bits to encode the rest. Now, Obviously, very complex chords like orchestra, like classical music, where there are like 50 players playing at the same time, we will not get a very good compression since every each of the player is demanding high quality. But for normal audio recording, like in a movie, where most of the time we just have somebody speaking, this works quite well. So fundamentally, in an MP3, like 320 kilobit per second, a lot of details are lost, but the main track is still there. All right, now that was technical, pretty boring. So let's go to the practical consequences. Well, a good example of a situation is you're sitting on your sofa and you own a pair of Sonos or a proper TV system, a pair of Pose or some expensive headphones like AKG and so on. Will it make a difference in that case between Spotify, which is MP3 based, and Tidal Hi Fi, which is flag based? Yes, definitely. MP3 sound has audible artifacts 
when complex sounds are encoded, such as harmonics, with snares, orchestras, large band, AT scenes, and it boils down that you will be hearing some robotic sound, which are basically unpleasant, especially on the long run. However, as long as you listen your music on the go, with a lot of background noise, such as, for example, on a train, on a plane, inside a car, well, you will spot very little differences between lossless and lossy compression, between Tidal Hi-Fi and between Spotify. The same applies if you have cheap speakers around your house. Also, if you use Bluetooth headset, no matter what, Bluetooth itself uses nowadays, though this is changing slowly, an MP3-like compression, so it doesn't make any difference. In my personal experience, also, uh, selectively encoded MP3s don't really work well when you play music very loud. And a good example of that is a club. Well, if the DJ would be playing MP3 sounds where the music is really loud, that would easily give you some headache because all the sounds are loud. I mean, you are in a club and so our ear is able to well receive all of the sounds. On top of that, resonances in the room and DJ equalization might actually emphasize those sounds which are bad encoded resulting again in very poor robotic sound. And a last mention for practical usage. Well, what I said before applies only if you're using MP3 320 kilobit per second, so properly encoded MP3. Now, unfortunately, there are still some 128 kilobit per second and even 96 kilobit per second MP3 around. And that's even the default on Spotify, which I invite you to change, to the best quality, well, simply don't use these quality settings. Going to like 10 is compression from LaserDisc, this really kills the sound and is killing so much information that you will be able to spot the difference even through the cheap speakers of your notebook. Now, can we do better than LaserDisc, FLAC and MP3? Yes, and one example which is available through Tidal Hi-Fi is MQA, Master Quality Authenticator. That's the next level. If LaserDisc quality is not enough for you, I mean, LaserDisc came out in the 80s, MQA has even more. Up to now, we have been talking about the same master 44.1 kHz 16-bit stereo. But there are better masters out there. Studio typically records sounds using higher resolution machines and higher sampling rates to capture even more details and more sharply. Those are very subtle details. So the idea of MQA is that it combines lossless and lossy compressions all together. So MQA has at least the same quality of a flag for 4.1 kHz file, but then it has on top some lossy compression which keeps pulls in more bits and more details from the 24-bit 96 kHz masters. That's just like being in a recording studio. That, with the right equipments, can give you really a great experience, such as that being in a concert or listening to the music being played loud. And that's pure nirvana for the true audio lovers out there. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the review. I hope you understand the difference between 320 kilos MP3, FLAC, MQA, and I hope you learned that you should not use the lowest quality available on Spotify. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like the video, leave me a comment below with your comments, with your idea. Thanks for watching, see you next time.